Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Morning Bible Study. I'm Pastor George. It's exciting to be able to do this Exodus 30 passage with all of you today. So before we get into it, let's pray together real quick, and we will uh, then dive into the passage together. All right, let's, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, we are so thankful that we have uh, this time to read your word this morning. We just ask that as we go into this passage, you help reveal to us where you uh, are speaking to us this morning, what lessons you have to teach us, and where we can be looking for you. Lord, we just ask that you help us to see your story, your grand narrative in this passage for this morning, and where we can see the work of your Son. Lord, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. Uh, go ahead and read. And I will see you on the other side. All right, everyone. Excellent, excellent, excellent job reading. So just a reminder of what we did last week. Last week, we just talked about the priests, right? Talked about how Jesus is our high priest. Um, and the role that the priest kind of played in the temple ceremony. And so this week it goes back to, or I guess at this point, tabernacles, ceremony, but it'll move on to being a priest in, a, in the temple ceremony in a little bit. Anyway, besides the point, this week we see a few other items being added and this thing, a census tax being taken and stuff like that for the upkeep of incense. And so that's what happened. So let's read through it real quick and see what this is all kind of getting at here. You shall make an altar on which to burn incense, and you shall make it of acacia wood. A cubit shall be its length, and a cubit its breadth, and it shall be square, and two cubits shall be its height. Its horn shall be one piece with it. You shall overlay it with pure gold, its top and around its sides and its horns, and you shall make a molding of gold around it, and you shall make two golden rings for it. Under its molding, on two opposite sides of it, you shall make them, and they shall be holders for poles from which to carry it. You shall make the poles with case you would, and over they lay them with gold. And you shall put it in front of the veil that is above the ark of the testimony, in front of the mercy seat that is above the testimony, where I will meet you. And Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. Every morning when he dresses the lamps, he shall burn it. And when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, he shall burn it. A regular incense offering before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer unauthorized incense on it, or a burnt offering, or a grain offering, and you shall not pour a drink offering on it. Aaron shall make atonement on its horns once a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. He shall make atonement for it once in the year throughout your generations. It is most holy to the Lord. All right, so this is going to be a little basin where they burn incense right before they enter the holy place where the Lord dwells, right before the ark is, the holy of holies, as it is lovingly called. Uh, and what is this to do? Well, um, incense serves like a few different purposes in the Bible, but here what this is supposed to do is, well, all right, I'm going to back up. How many, I, I know we're our, we, we're Presbyterian, so it's po very possible that many people have never even like seen incense used in services before. So incense is used in Christian services, um, especially like more liturgical churches and stuff like that. So some like high church Anglicans will use it. Catholics will use it once in a while. The Orthodox love it. And let me tell you, I was in Greece and I went to a few Orthodox services and boy, mm, they love it. They use it all the time and it is incredibly uh, pungent. And basically what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to purify the person before God, right? And that's the role that incense works here uh, as well, right? So the reason that they're lighting this incense is uh, so that, you know, Aaron, when he goes in, is protected from the power and the presence of God, right? And uh, and that is uh, also, it symbolizes the prayers of Israel rising up. You know, you'll have these great lines from the Psalms and from the prophets where it's like our prayers rise up to you like incense, right? So it's, it's like that. So uh, it just see it as like a, one, a way to purify the person and two, like a, a show of constant prayer on behalf of the people. Um, and that's why you're not supposed to mess with it, right? That's not what you're not supposed to sacrifice anything else on it. You're just supposed to use it for incense. This is something that is messed up by uh, the sons of, of Aaron, by the way. All right. The Lord said to Moses, when you take a census of the people of Israel, 
Each shall give a ransom for his life to the Lord when you number them, that there be no plague among them when you number them. Each one who is numbered in the census shall give the half shekel according to the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel is 20 geras. <laughs> I like how it always says that because it's like, oh, oh yeah, garam. Of course, we know that is. Uh, a garam is 1 50th of an ounce or a, a 0.06 grams. And a shekel is about 2 fifths of an ounce or an 11 grams. These are different types of currency, right? Um, I think Israel, I don't, I think the currency today, I think they still use, like, the state of Israel has, like, uses shekels. I can't remember, though. Never been. Um, all right, shekel of the sanctuary, a half a shekel is an offering of the Lord. Everyone who is numbered in the census from 20 years old and upward shall give the Lord's offering. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half, half than the half shekel when you give the Lord's offering to make atonement for your wives. Shall take the atonement money from the people of Israel and shall give it to the service of the tent of meeting, that it may bring the people of Israel to remembrance before the Lord, so as to make atonement for your sins. So here we have a census tax being taken, um, and of course, like over time, this would be increased. But one of the things that actually, uh, yeah, this is one of the things that Jesus is complaining about, and others in the New Testament when they're talking about all the taxes they need to take. Give um, one of the things that's worth pointing out here, actually, and it made me remind me of Jesus, actually, um, and this is I I think the big connection for us in this passage today is we have this idea that uh, the people of Israel have to pay this census as a ransom, right? Um, and so, what is a ransom? Well, ransom is a money that is taken by someone, by a captor, or, or by uh, someone else. Um, uh, who has control over you, like, to not kill you, right? That's kind of the, the point of the ransom money, right? So if someone kidnaps someone, you pay the ransom. Um, it, it you usually really existed in warfare when you would, like, capture people. You would hold on to important prisoners so you could ransom them back. And, you know, if the family or the king or whatever didn't pay, then the prisoners would be killed, that sort of thing, right? And it reminded me of this passage from Matthew where, uh, Jesus has that famous line where he goes, "The Son of Man came not to serve, uh, to 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 be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many." Right. So Jesus takes that place. And actually, the reason that they're doing this is because they pay this 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 tax because as an offering, right, as a way to cover the sin that they've committed. Because rightfully, God has a reason to take their life if they've sinned against Him, but they. Uh, pay this tax and God uses it as a ransom and, and foregoes their sin, right? It's kind of just like using goat or using all these other things. Um, and it reminded me that Jesus actually takes in and steps in and fills this place and not only fills it like once, um, but forever, right? We don't have to, you know, step. He doesn't have to step in every single time. He, he gave his life as a ransom for many, right? So it just reminded me of that. Um, and I think that's exactly what Jesus is calling to in this passage, right? That this idea that we have to um, uh, continually atone for our sins uh, through sacrifice will be no longer needed because he will step in and be the perfect sacrifice. So I don't know, just an interesting thing um, to, to see there, right? All right. Uh, the bronze basin, the Lord said to Moses, you shall also make a basin of bronze with its stand of bronze for washing. Basin, for those of you who don't know, is like a bowl. Uh, you shall put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet when they go into the tent of meeting or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn a food offering to the Lord. They shall wash with water so that they may not die. They shall wash their hands and their feet so that they may not die. It shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his offspring throughout their generations. So the priests are going to wash their hands and uh, their feet when they approach the altar to enter the tabernacle for ministry, right? Um, funnily enough, God is really super specific in all these other areas, but he doesn't seem too specific about the basin of bronze thing here. Um, Solomon has a... And when he builds a temple, he gives dimensions for it, but um, but we don't have one here, funnily enough. Um, and the reason that uh, water is a purification, right, uh, and especially the hands and the feet, which are going to be used when you step into the sanctuary for your feet, and the hands are going to be used to handle all of these important ceremonial items, right, 
Um, so you're supposed to be pure when you handle these things, right? Um, so, you know, uh, you do this so that you may not die, right? Because holiness will kill those things that are tarnished, right? So that's that's why God makes them do this. Then we have this last, last part, and this is where uh, we figure out if you ever want to make incense, this is how you can do it. The Lord said to Moses, take the finest spices of liquid myrrh, 500 shekels and of sweet smelling cinnamon, half as much, that is 250, and 250 of aromatic cane, and 500 of cassia, according to the shekel of sanctuary, and a hin of olive oil. You shall make of these sacred anointing oil, blended as by the perfumer. It shall be a holy anointing oil. With it you shall anoint the tent of meaning, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all its utensils, and the lampstand, and its utensils, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all its utensils, and the basin and its stand shall consecrate them, and they may be most holy. Whatever touches them will become holy. You shall anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them, that they may serve me as priests. And you shall say to the people of Israel, This shall be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. It shall not be poured on the body of an ordinary person, and you shall make no other like it in com composition. It is holy, and it shall be holy to you. Whoever compounds any like it, or whoever puts any of it on an outsider, shall be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Take sweet spices, stacked Onychia, galbanum, sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each there shall be an equal part, and make an incense blended by the perfumer, seasoned with salt, pure and holy. You shall beat some of it very small, and put part of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where I shall meet with you. It shall be most holy for you, and the incense that you shall make according to its composition you shall not make for yourselves. It shall be for you holy to the Lord. Whoever makes any like it a perfume shall be cut off from his people. All right, so like, what's going on? Why is, why is God so focused on this issue? Well, what is anointing oil? All right, well, we already talked about incense, so we don't have to worry about the incense. We talked about why incense is important. So anointing oil is used by priests here to, you know, anoint the people who will serve as priests and to bless the sacred buildings that they're going to be building, right? Um, the reason that this is important um, is because God is establishing hierarchy here, right? So the only the priests are able to use it, and that is, be and for only for certain things. One, because God is putting a check on their power, because priests. The point of this is to bless using God's holy power these buildings, right, um, and these people in order to make them worthy to to serve and to contain His presence, right. Um, and so in that way, he's establishing hierarchy because he's putting these priests in charge for everyone else. But at the same time, these priests can't just go around and, you know, start marking everything and making it holy because you can see how that might be abused because certain powerful people might want their, their themselves or their children or their house or their donkey, whatever, marked with this oil. Um, and priests could start to become corrupt, right? This is what happens with religious figures, right, with uh, pastors, priests, rabbis, imams, and all sorts of different cultures, is that they're usually held to this standard, but they realize the power, spiritual power that they have, and they can use this to take advantage of people, or, you know, people can use that to take advantage of other people by getting the blessings of the priest or the pastor to in order to do certain terrible things, right? And so what God is doing here is he's being very firm about when you can use this and when you can't because he doesn't want to see this abused. Um, it's one of those interest, interesting things where we think God is like going way over the top, but actually it's this kind of protective negation, right? Protective by saying you can't just go out and use these things the way that you want to or whatever is convenient. You have to use it for these very certain things. And if any of you try and recreate it, we're going to cut you off from your people, right? Um, and so it's just having a high high standard, which is what you could say Exodus is all about uh, in, in many ways for these people who have now been freed um, in their covenant life with the Lord. They have to act a certain way, just like we have to act a certain way as Christians. Luckily, ours is actually, I shouldn't say luckily, uh, in many ways we have to, it's, ours is a lot harder because we, we have to just do it by the commands of Jesus, right, and kind of figure things out. Um, in fear and trembling, while here uh, it's kind of easy uh, to follow the just the written rules um, and even manipulate them, which is what the Pharisees and Sadducees ended up doing, right? Which is why Jesus 
uh, makes a new covenant and, and uh, attacks them. So. so anyway, that was Exodus 30. Uh, Exodus 31 next week is a short one. Um, so we might do Exodus 31 and 32. I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess I can kind of... Oof. Oh, yeah, maybe we'll do two. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Anyway, um, thank you guys for being with me uh, this week, and I will see you next week for more Exodus. So let's uh, pray ourselves out. Dear Lord, we thank you um, for this reading that we had today. We thank you especially for Jesus who came in and gave his life as a ransom for many. We are thankful that we do not have to continually uh, make atonement for our sins, but that one who was perfect, died on the cross for our sins, and made perfect atonement for us forever. Uh, Lord, we just ask that as we go out into this week, we become more um, aware of this, uh, and that we are able to praise you and remember what you have given us and put that on our whips every single moment of every single day. Uh, Lord, we just ask that as we go out into the world that we are able to tell people about this, Jesus, and um, know that you are with us and loving over us every second. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I will see you guys tomorrow for the next Elon. Peace out.